Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building a Nation with Polonia Vorshevar. Finally, the stuff arrived, except for one slight problem. The, the chain I got, firstly, really small. Secondly, might fit around my neck, because I got a fat neck, boys. But finally, we can move on from the pimp suit and moved into the, some new garbs. And um, you'd be amazed how expensive some of this stuff was, even secondhand on eBay. But I do things from my craft. So it's a brand new season, it's a brand new me, and it's a brand new Wojciech Fiacek. You might notice here that he's got a face. I've finally given some players some faces. Only to a few of them that I'm sure are like going to have long-term futures with the club. Um, so that is now a thing that has happened. I think he looks nice with his sort of flowing hair. I figured we could use a Bruno Bridges style looking player. Um, so we've gone for him. I've tried to keep Yamrog uh, giving him this little soul patchy type of beard. It was the only one I could find in the face pack. And as always, if you're interested in the faces in this, it's they're from Chilled Moose, uh, from her Patreon, and from her Twitter. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description, but that's where you get them from uh, before we get the where did you get the face packs, Matt? So uh, it was a bit of a weird summer in the sense that I got the notification that the transfer window was opened and then we had a league game two days later. Um, we've already paid three league games. This is ridiculous. We had basically no time at all with which to get signings in um, before. I figured we were going to do end up starting the season on a uh, Europa League game and that would be the first match of the entire year. No, no, we've already played three league games, which I figured would be important for us to do off camera anyway, so we can get the season moving along a bit. So today is going to be our first ever match in Europe, and we're playing a team from the Belarusian League. So that's pretty cool. That's going to be what's coming up in today's episode. I've got some games to show you off camera, sort of, but also we're going to go through the other transfers first because those players, of course, played in the games. So there you go. But first, admin. Fiatruk, named on the bench in the team of the year. Uh, it was... 10 Lech players and one player from Legia, I think. We also ended up with a transfer fund of 1.8 million and 18k in wages. And I've really struggled to spend it, but we have still spent quite a bit of money. I also sold a clause that we had on Ferret for uh, 65,000 pounds to give us a bit of extra funds because he's played 14 games for his new club and he's not scored a goal yet. The board are also increasing our youth recruitment and our junior coaching budget. All good things. I won manager of the season. You can't go wrong there. The scouting range has been opened up to worldwide and we got 400k in new sponsorships along with all sorts of other stuff. Lots of goodies. Fiatchik is also now the new captain of the club. He's got the best leadership in the team, so I figured it makes sense to make him the captain. Hmiel is now the uh, the second choice captain. The vice captain, as it were. Now, transfers out, transfers in, games off camera, Europe time. So just quickly, some players have gone out. Michael Boretsky, gone out, £3.1 million to grief. Next up, Arthur Hebda, gone out to Radiomac for £2.5 million. Again, I've put 50% in Excel fee clauses, just in case. And finally, Octavian, he's left for £20,000 with a 50% in Excel fee clause um, because he complained about wanting to leave. And I was like, ah, we're probably not going to be able to hang on to him like this. And I don't want to unset unsettled players so got 20k for him not the end of the world i think it's fine now it's time to move on to the transfers in and we still have time to make some more i know there's one more i'm looking at potentially could be a big deal first we'll go through the ones we have brought in first up free transfer of jakob zima he is a center back so i did want to bring i'd already brought him in before the end of last season anyway uh, i'd already kind of had that deal done 15 tackling 13 marking 10 heading he's only five foot nine though so he's a very very short boy he's a yeah, he's a short king, but um, yeah, he's on a five-year deal. I brought him in because he was on a free transfer. It's not on huge wages, and it was just a sort of backup to the backups, essentially. Next up is a young goalkeeper, Masia Turek, is coming on a free transfer. Again, he was released by Odro Opele. I don't know why. I think he's actually quite good. Um, but again, free transfer, not on huge wages. I wanted to back up because, of course, Bartosz... Um, uh, Tobias has now left, so we wanted another backup to Neuig about, so I figured this guy would do the job nicely. Also secured the loan signing of Aiz Coyote from Borussia Dortmund. Uh, it's the only player that I brought in on loan currently. I'm looking at a few others, but they want huge money. Uh, great teamwork. I think there's a lot, a lot to like about this young Nigerian that's come through at Dortmund, and he's going to be with us for the season, so that will booster our back line a little bit, but I am looking at a potential other centre-back. And now on to the slightly bigger transfers. This is Mariusz Pomorski, and you might look at him and be like, yeah, he's pretty all right, and he is. Uh, he's the sort of player that I brought in to kind of back up Kokoschka. I did have some interest, but no one ever put a bid in. There was news articles saying that uh, Piast, of all people, were going to put a £1 million bid in for Kokoschka. It's never materialised. Uh, so this is Mariusz Pomorski. He is a backup to that spot, basically. He's got the potential, and that's why I was kind of interested in him. He's fast, so I think he'll do fine. And he's signed for 8.5k. Next up is where the money's starting to go. I said I wanted to find another young right back to back up Yamrog, and this is him. This is Oskar Fratschak, and he's come in from Viswa for £105,000, I think, in the end. Uh, but again, he's got that potential six foot three as well you know i love a tall boy as a center back as a right back um great jumping reach decent enough okay stats he's still only 17 years old though lots to improve 10 passing nine vision good work rate crossing is uh eight which isn't bad his dribbling is the only real downside there but for the 100k i was prepared to pay it Another one of these players, this is Mariusz Bortnik. He's come in from Gornik. So, you know, again, centre midfielder, but he can play a bit deeper. And that's kind of where I'm more looking at. Um, good 
good-ish marking and passing, great tackling, uh, good free kicks as well. He's decent in the air. He's six foot tall, got great balance, 17 years old, long way to improve. I think he's coming for 160,000 in total. Next up is yet another of these, although he is a bit more expensive. This is 20-year-old and more old as well. Dariusz Kucharski, who's coming from uh, Wodge. I think they're in the second tier. I'm actually not sure what division they're in. Point is, I saw he was available and I thought, oh, okay, this guy's actually very good for two reasons. One, because he can play on that left side, but also he can play through the middle and he's bloody excellent at both of those things. He's fast. He's got great jumping reach. He's six foot one. He shoots from distance, but does have 10 long shots. We might get rid of that. He likes to switch ball to the other flank, which is fine because he's got 14 passing and 12 vision. Uh, decent dribbling. All right. First touch. Uh, good decisions. There's a lot to like about this guy, particularly in the physicals area. He's cost 275k, which I still think is an absolute bargain, to be honest. Uh, £625 a week. Now, he did have a release clause, which is why we were able to do that. And next up, is a player that isn't Polish. We've signed a non-Pole. It's Nikola Todorov, who's come in from CSKO Sofia for 300 grand. Now, you can see, obviously, very quickly why I was interested in this guy. 16 passing, only 7 vision, fair enough. 19 teamwork. He's a hard-working man. Uh, good marking, good technique, solid tackling. He's just a solid, solid midfielder. 21, um, sorry, 12 under 21 caps at the age of 18. Five goals to them. He's on £1,200 a week, so solid wages too. But I think this guy, even for 300 grand, I still think he's going to be a really, really solid player. And this is him. This is David Hoksha, who's coming from an Albanian side. He's coming from uh, Skendibu. Now, I actually had a bid in for another guy called um, Ferris. Ferris? Ferra. Ferra. You know, you'll know who Ferra is because he scored two long-range bangers against us this season for Arca in both of their wins. And he became available as a result of their relegation. And he was monstrously good. And we managed to agree a deal with Arca of, oh god, what was it? It was like a million pounds in total. But I know that Rakov were interested as well. So we got the deal agreed and the contract was all set to go. We agreed the contract, everything was good. And we were just waiting and waiting and waiting. And then through my scout report came David Hoksha, an 18 year old, and already got four caps for Albania and a goal. He's a mercenary personality, so he's essentially Frano Fazic, is what we've bought here. Um, but when I saw that he had four star current ability, five star potential, he's got 17 flair, great acceleration, he's six foot tall, uh, decent dribbling, 12 passing, 12 vision, 12 work rate, 12 technique, 15 teamwork. As much as he is a bit of a mercenary, he's got some amazingly good stats for that. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with this kid. Uh, great free kicks again. Six foot tall. His heading isn't great, but he is actually fairly tall, which should help us. Um, massively, massively impressed with being able to bring him in. And the fact is, we brought him in for £105,000. And to me, that is an absolute steal. Two grand a week. He's our highest paid player, but it had to be done. Four year contract. Um, I think he does have a release clause, but it's like 3 million. Uh, 3.7 million, I think. And that's for foreign clubs only. So we'd make an absolute buttload of money on him if we did sell him. 37 times what we bought him for. I think this guy is quality. And I'd already done the deal. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. So it doesn't really matter then what happens with the deal for Ferra. Luckily, or not luckily, I would have liked to bring him in anyway because I felt like he, he would have probably been the best attacking midfielder at the club and probably would have played in front of Hoxha. So there is that. Um, but then he eventually joined Rakov for £1.4 million. And I thought to myself... Ferret is only marginally better than Hoxha when I compare the two of them. And we've got him for 100 grand and Rakov have just paid 1.4 million for a guy. So I think we've mugged them off massively there. Uh, I think this guy could be really, really decent for us this year. It hasn't knocked Zuba down the pecking order as such because obviously, you know, we've got Bokanak and we've got uh, Gora still technically. Um, but I feel like he's still going to be getting plenty of game time this year as is Zuba. So that's actually all the business we've done so far. I'm looking at some other loans, we've still got plenty of money to go. Let me have a look actually. Yeah, just check. We've got 1.4 million left. Sorry, 1.1 million left. And we've still got over 13 grand in wages to go. I'm just struggling to spend it at the moment because we're not finding the right types of players. But I'm still pretty pleased with the business that we've done. Anyway, off camera games. Now we've got to show you those too. Okay, so I just got my first ever crash dump on FM19. My first proper crash dump. When I tried to click on this game to load it up to show you, it just crashed. Thank God I actually saved because I hadn't saved at any point during that transfer window up until just before I started recording. Thank God I did because sometimes I don't and I would have just lost the entire bloody window. I feel very fortunate for that but yeah that's really weird hopefully that doesn't keep happening because that's the first crash up i've had all season and uh, all year and i don't know why that just happened maybe because i was messing with the cash when i was sorting out the player faces i don't really know it's a weird one anyway we did win our first game of the season 4-2 despite having a ridiculously rotated team like crazy rotation took the lead early on conifal ball in from him headed at home lovely stuff we added a second before half time with jan pelts and then added a third through mateusz boschnak three nil up before half time it was all good we'd also missed a penalty in the first half so it could have been four nil at half time we were playing brilliantly as you can see the lineup was a bit of a weird one so zima started pomorski started yadovsky started uh, gora had to start due to the fact that 
that we just played that bloody friendly two days before that. Thankfully, Whistler had some similar problems, it would seem. Then as we came out in the second half, they then scored a nice own goal for us to make it 4-0. And we were kind of cruising at that point. But then I was forced to make some substitutions just because of the, the lack of fitness in some of these players. So on the bench, uh, eventually Zuba came on, as did Lizak, that youngster from our youth intake. And then Robert Tomchik, another youngster from our youth intake from a couple of seasons ago, all came on. And then things kind of just went a bit wrong from there. Uh, we sort of struggled after that as Moscala was able to score a goal for them before Vukan Savicevic of Red Star Belgrade fame managed to score a penalty for them in the 84th minute. And it could have been more. They had a chance in the 89th as well. Well, uh, but we did eventually get away with a 4-2. Felt a bit disappointed, though, to only um, win it 4-2 when we could have probably been 5 or 6 nil up in this match. Our chance creation this season has been mwah, beautiful. And in the next game, it carried on much like that, except somehow we didn't manage to score a bloody goal. I could not believe that we didn't score in this match. We dominated this game from start to finish. Uh, not in possession, but in terms of chances. Six half chances, a clear cut. We should have been winning this match comfortably. The chances were there. We just didn't bloody take them, and it was disappointing. But we did at least get a clean sheet. It's just a shame, because we should be beating Gordon. But then thankfully we returned to winning ways with a back-to-back -back clean sheet and a 2-0 win, a 2 -nil win, 2 -nil win over newly promoted, I think, GKS Katowice. Um, this was a good game for us, but again, we missed a penalty. Uh, Wigowetsky this time had to play because of an injury to uh, Gorka and we missed a penalty again. So two penalties this season already and we've missed both of them. It's not great, is it? Because, um, well, we don't really have a penalty taker still. No one has great penalties in this team. Um, that's one of the things I've been looking out for, but just no one's come up that has that. Uh, we took the lead early on, though, through Premish Piemiswav Yamrog. The ball was headed down to him from a corner by Konifal, and there he was to put it home for us. We then added another one in the 83rd minute. The ball was rolled into Darius Azuba, and he smashed it home for 2-0. It was really good times to see that. 2-0 win. Great performance again. The chances being created were obscene. Uh, 31 shots in this game, but we couldn't hit the target enough, which was a bit disappointing. But again, still a phenomenal performance. Um, but we just need to be a bit better at scoring some goals in these games when it really does call for it, you know? But that still gets us off to a relatively pleasing start to the league. We got seven points from our first three matches. We're second, uh, sorry, third in the league. Lech actually lost their first two matches and conceded a buttload of goals while doing it. Um, so that is very, very interesting. The thing did come through and we do in fact have an automatic group stage spot in the Champions League this season and we now have two the top two will now go into the Champions League the, the other three into the Europa League so it's it's very very good looking uh, for us at the moment we are 10th in the coefficients and oh my goodness we're doing well scrolling right down you'll see that we are in fact playing Shakhtar Soligorsk of the Belarusian Premier Division uh, they beat a team from Bulgaria in order to go through to this round so it's going to be a tough one I think although it's really really hard to to tell of the quality at this point we have no team news for the mort server they are the favorites weirdly uh we are we've got three players unregistered they're mostly youngsters gorka's out as is todorov so we'll see what lineup we can play today i think we should be okay though so uh other faces you can see obviously hoxha got one kokoshka got one conifar got one and of course yamrog uh, in case anyone's interested that was the best i could do with the whole soul patch so that is now pshemishwav yamrog's face um looking good as for the lineup that's about as good as we're going to get i think gorka's not a fit yeah, Izzy. So the, the bat line is fine. Meal, Hoksha. Um, yeah, it's going to have to be Hoksha, really, isn't it? He's just the best. Zaborowski, Fiacek, Zavzhakrai, Wigowetsky. That's fine. Let's do the bench because we can't put Pratchikat or um, Gurgan Didze in the team. Yeah, I'm actually tempted to go for that. I'm going to start off with Aiz Coyote today instead of Kaslik. Makes more sense for me. So we'll go Kaslik, Zima, Zuba. Oh, lovely. Kaslik, Zima, Zuba, Bochnak, Pomorski, Saucek, and Michel Gora. Sorry, Mateusz Gora. So we're not going to have Peltsy there instead. And I also want. Bortnik on the bench. That's not too bad. That should be fine. I've also made some slightly different variations on the tactic. This is the expressive one for that thing I always switch to. And this is one for 4-3-3s where we go narrow defensively. That's my plan anyway. Just so we've got that stuff trained. See, my plan here is if we get an away goal, that is pretty much us set, you know? For me, it's all about us just getting an away goal. The away goal is key. And I'll swing this chain around in the air if we can get it. Oh, we've got to put that down carefully. There we go. Let's go out there. Show the fans something special. See if someone like Hoxha can have a good game today. I want that away goal. That is the, the absolute key to this match is the away goal. The ball is definitely with us now. Fiacic always put it straight in. Wojciech with his first of the season and there is our away goal. I'll swing the chain around. Ow, I need a flare. I need one of those like a uh, smoke grenades or something. <laughs> um, that is a wonderful free kick from Fiacic. Low and hard on the goalkeeper's side. Doesn't matter. First ever goal in Europe for us there. Well, not first ever goal, but first goal under my stewardship. Right, now we can sort of set about getting a couple more goals today and seeing this tie to bed. Zaborowski's having a little run through. Loads of space and Smil's already in. And it's a good save from the keeper. That's more like it, lads. A few more chances now. Better. Going to stretch his legs and run at them. They're not really closing him down. They're letting him all the way through and he's going to find Smil again. He's got a score. And Zaho! Zavshakrai makes it too. We're 2-0 up in Belarus and surely that's pretty much us through to the next round already. Don't know why they were and they're the favourites. Lovely stuff here. Yamrov, they just keep letting him run. 
The one thing you can't do against us is allow our players to run. Camille, I mean, he's trying to shoot here, I think. With Zavjikrai, that is a stunning effort. First ever goal in Europe for Sebastian Zavjikrai, and it's 27 minutes into this first campaign. Lovely. Camille does well. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he does not. Loads of space in behind. We're gonna. This is a straight foot race, and Kosh goes in. Saved by Neugebauer. Right, let's have it. It'd be nice if we can grab a goal or two, just so I can maybe bring on a couple of players, get Zuber on for some football too, because uh, he's going to complain otherwise. Camille, have a little run behind. He's already through one or two players, and he's already lost it. It's not the best first touch. If they were to get a goal back, there might still be something in this game for him. We've got to be careful. Oh, God. No, no! They've got one! Anton Mikulifs Mikulski has got a goal back here for Shakhtar. That is the really bad thing to have happen there. We've not started the second half at all. Well, literally, they've scored straight from the kickoff, and now it's 2-1. We were hoping to be 3-0. Yamrog, still, it's an excellent finish from him, but that is unacceptable. We're in such a good position in this game. Do not muck it up. Fiarchik again. Oh, he's got another one. Two free kicks in one game for Wojciech Fiarchik. He's already grabbed a pair of goals in his first European game this season. He struggled a little bit in the league, but... Not tonight. He's just been stepping up and pinging them in. Um, God, it's great to have him in the team. It really does buff his little striker numbers up quite a bit this season. There you go. 3-1. Zaborowski could probably pick out Camille. Oh, and he's missed again in our first European game. And it gives us a good chance back at home. Unless Camille's got one last sting in the tail. No, he doesn't. And that will surely finish it off at 3-1 to Polonia. That's not bad. Uh, wow, look at the red cards being thrown about in these games. Good Lord. 3-1 win for Polonia Volsfall. I don't know if we'll get to the group stages or anything like this, but some wins here will give us some money and some coefficient points, which will just help Poland out a little bit, you know? So there we have it. Our first win in Europe. We've obviously got the second leg, but I feel like we should be able to breeze through that. So next episode, since I want to do a bit more European stuff, it's going to be a double live com of the first and second leg of who, I mean, I know I'm being a bit presumptuous, but I feel like we'll probably get through. If we don't, then obviously it will change, but it's going to be a, yeah, first and second, both the legs of the next round of the Euro. European, the Europa League qualifiers uh, so with the other games just off camera in between there we'll obviously get some league games in here as well but we're just trying to concentrate on the Europa League because it's new it's it's fun and it's new so hopefully we'll get through and hopefully we'll get someone that's relatively beatable so we can at least get one more round that'd be the idea uh, they want us to just be competitive and I think we're going to be able to do that so if you've enjoyed this episode and you're looking forward to the new season and also player rumors and nicknames for the new guys do let me know drop those in the comments drop them in the discord drop all of those things this is really hurting my neck uh so yeah if you've enjoyed this and you're looking forward to the new season drop a like on the video that'd be spectacular and uh, if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button for more videos like this can't promise we'll always be a team of belarusian farmers but maybe sometimes we will and i will join you guys in the next episode for some more europa league goodies thank you so much for watching Bye bye